Hi, everyone. Thanks for being here Saturday morning. I appreciate that. I'm Dmitry Shevrin. I work for Rancher. Well, now Rancher has been acquired by SUSE, so I work for a company which is called SUSE. So I'm a field engineer. So what I'm doing, I'm just working with our prospects just to try to see that the product is, is best fit for, for the requirement. I'm going to talk to you about uh, the provisioning of multiple Kubernetes clusters into various environments by a tool which is called Rancher. Rancher is fully open source, 100%, no open core, nothing. So in order for me to understand to whom I'm talking today, could you please, by a show of hands, just let me, let me know who, is used, who, who was using Kubernetes in their lab? Okay, about half. So second question, who is using Kubernetes in production today? Third, maybe? And who is using, last question, uh, who is using Kubernetes in production with multiple clouds? So it's maybe Amazon Azure, Google on-prem. Okay, thanks. So um, a couple of words of what I'm going to, be, going to be talking about. So we are at SUSE oriented towards a hybrid cloud infrastructure, all right? So what does it mean? We have um, various distributions supported, operating systems. With an acquisition of Rancher Labs by SUSE, this hasn't changed. So today we could use Rancher to provision multiple Kubernetes clusters onto various clouds. We support equally Amazon, Azure, and Google, three major cloud providers. I'm, show you, I'm going to show you uh, what, are, what are the other small cloud providers available for you. Um, we also support two Kubernetes distributions, Arkey and K3S. Our key stands for Rancher Kubernetes Engine, so that's our version of Kubernetes, which is 100% CNCF compatible. Our key version one is based on Docker. Our key version two is based on Containerd. So today we already can we can be completely Docker free if you want. K3S is another distribution of Kubernetes, also based, uh, also created and written by Rancher and SUSE. So the idea was to to compare it with K3S and K8S. So the the, the hint was it's five times simpler. So K3S is created to be installed into small devices, which we see everywhere, such as Raspberry Pi, NVIDIA, Jetson Nano, you know, all your fridges and, and you know, all, this, all the devices. Everything here is going to be based on hybrid cloud infrastructure, which can, which can be running on-prem, so on your bare metal servers, on your VMware virtualization, Zen, KVM, Hyper-E, whatever have you. Our approach within SUSE is that we, we don't want to force you to, to be sucked into one private cloud, be it Amazon, Google, Azure, Alibaba, whatever else you're using. We, and we, our intention is to treat all Kubernetes as, as first-class Kubernetes citizens. So this doesn't happen automatically all the time. So normally, as Amazon is the most popular distribution, we normally start with Amazon. We work later with Azure and Google. But what we try to do is to, to treat them all equally so that you, as, a, as an end user, will be able to create clusters, manage them, upgrade, deploy applications onto this cluster identically. Okay? Now, the value is in managing Kubernetes, right? So you probably don't need Kubernetes for the sake of it, right? You, you want to run something onto this Kubernetes, right? So you have some of your applications, so maybe you're, you, you, you're running databases, maybe you're running Java applications, Redis, uh, middleware, any, anything. So that's our approach on the market. We are just trying not to force anything to anyone, anyone to anything. What we are trying to do is to offer you an open version. So Rancher is, as I said, 100% free. You can go to GitHub today. You can download it, use it. The paid version of Rancher doesn't exist. Okay. So that's what you are seeing on the screens. It's what we call Cube Cake. Right. So it has three levels. The first level at the bottom is going to be a operating system. Okay. So as I said, we try to be operating system agnostic. So we support obviously less RHEL, CentOS, while it's still here. We support Ubuntu, we support Oracle. Yeah, we already support Amazon Linux. So that's, that's the base level, right? So that's the, the foundation. The second level is going to be Kubernetes as, as, a, as a cluster, all right? So here you can, you can use one of multiple versions. You can use our key if you're running a classical ins installation in data center, okay? So if you're just running your own data center or your Collocating a data center, data center with bare metal or with KVM or with other, any other type of virtualization. So that can be our key. If you're fully cloud, you can be running one of the managed Kubernetes distributions, such as Amazon EKS, Azure EKS, uh, or Google GKE. And we see more and more this penetration of K3S into the small devices, because you know now every in, in let's say we, we, we focus on hospitals who wanted to use 
in K3 as on the devices that measure your, your blood pressure. There are ma many more and more cars installed in K3 as in inside it. There are devices such as trains, you know, planes. So that's going to be a, a edge world where a number of clusters grow significantly. So now we are not talking about a couple of clusters or dozens of clusters. We're talking about hundreds, even thousands of clusters. Now, that's the second level. You see Kubernetes. The third level is, is where a lot of application and configuration is happening. And there, this, is, this is the level to both like levels Kubernetes and SUSE Rancher and Kubernetes uh, middleware we're trying to simplify, all right? To clarify, Rancher is a tool which allows you to speed up your deployment management and other stuff. You can do everything uh, with, w w which you do with Rancher without Rancher. So what Rancher brings you is just simplicity, right? So you can just speed it up what you do with Kubernetes. So this level of, of SUSE Rancher, you see there are many, many things in here. So there is authentication, there is a, a deployment of Helm charts, there is installation of service mesh, there is a long horn whenever you need a persistent storage for your, for your volumes. So there are many various elements. There is a GitOps delivery, because as soon as a number of your clusters exceeds maybe a couple of hundreds, it's not manageable manually anymore. It just becomes too complex. You can't, as a human being, manage hundreds of clusters. You would probably need to be using something like GitOps and put your configuration into code and keep it in Git. Now, obviously, this whole cake is not, doesn't exist just for the sake of it, right? So this whole cake exists so that eventually you will be running your application on top of it. Now, we are trying to build a, a stack which is going to be agnostic so that you'll be able to run whatever applications you have, be it PHP-based, be it Java-based, be it C, C binaries, even Windows now. I already mentioned, so Rancher was a company founded in 2014. We existed for five years. In 2009, and uh, uh, end of 2020, we were acquired. So now we are merged into SUSE. SUSE existed for 30 years. It's a German company for those of you who, who don't, who, who don't uh, know about that. So the company publishes distribution of for Linux, which is called SLES. And now there is a version of product which is called SUSE Rancher, which is, has been the latest version has been out two weeks ago. I'm going to show you my, just a couple more slides, and then we're going to go to demo. So what, what do we bring you, uh, like a value? What can you use? Rancher for, as, especially as opposed to cloud providers. You know, when you're working with cloud providers, it's very convenient because, well, they, they, they earn money, right? So they just create you a convenient interface. It's really easy to start. You just need a credit card. You type your credit card. Here you go. You got a container in 10 minutes. Now, why, why would you need to have Rancher for it? Well, first of all, we bring some additional values, right? So it's, it's a standardization. So is of, if you're anticipating just using Amazon or just using Google, you're just using Azure, you can go ahead and use it. So you can still do all the features. We can't beat, we can't implement within Rancher functionality on Amazon, which Amazon cannot do. No, we don't do that. We just call their API. Obviously, we can't do it. However, what we do do, we could offer you an option of utilizing all these clouds, or maybe two of them, or maybe the use case probably we see the most is on-prem and cloud. And you want to gradually migrate from on-prem to clouds or the other way around. It also happens. And you want to have one single pane of glass. So this is what we offer. Specifically here, there is a short comparison table explaining what are the benefits of you for you using Rancher against various Kubernetes providers at the same time. So as you see, it's mostly RBAC. It's an installation of Prometheus and Grafana, a monitoring stock stack for applications and, uh, and upgrades. All right. So that was the slide part. So let's get into practical part. Oh, let me share my browser. Let me connect my phone. Okay. Bear with me. Okay, phone. So what I'm going to be showing you is the version 2.6.0, which was one that went out two weeks ago. So if something doesn't work, well, you know, life is hard. So right now my Wi-Fi doesn't work, so bear with me. Getting there. All right, so that seems to work. Let me refresh that, so I'll make it full screen. Uh, I think it should be good enough in a couple of seconds. So yeah, you can see that. Phone size, good enough? No. Is it right? Visible? Can you just show for whom it's visible, please? Maybe a bit more. Okay. All right. All right. 
So I'm just going to close that and close that and close that. So what you see in here is the is UI of Rancher. So that's the screen. The screen you could get inside your installation quite quickly, right? So if you go to rancher.com, uh, rancher.com, uh, rancher.com, we have a quick start in here. So our quick start is really, really quick. It's like you can't be quicker. Oh my God. You can't be quicker than that, right? So you've got two steps. You prepare Linux host and you launch it. Today we still launch it as a Docker container. It just hasn't been changed. Now we don't recommend you use it in production. This is just to, to run, to test. So this is just in your environment. You can get it running in five minutes. So what you see here, you could see a screen which gives you a UI. Now I'm showing you here your UI. You don't have to use the UI. There are, there are many elements. So Rancher, Rancher UI uses API behind the scenes. So we expose REST API. And all of the actions you could launch from here, which I'm going to show, actually can be called by REST API. There is a Terraform provider. Same, same here. Same thing here. If you go to, to if you go on the internet, if you look for Terraform, you will find that there is a Terraform provider which is supported by us, which is also 100% open source. So you could just go there, use it, and write Terraform code if you want. There is also an option to download a CLI for those of you who prefer a command line. So, so that's Rancher. What you could do? What, what could you could you do with Rancher? The first thing you could do is you actually could create new clusters, okay? So like I promised you in slides, this is, this is a functionality where you could actually go, hit cloud providers, you need to give your own credentials clearly, and then you could have your clusters in one single pane of glass. Now, the most value, you get the most value from Rancher whenever you, you create it as a multi-cluster. You see we support clouds, we support also VMware, because for many of, of our customers, those who use on-prem, VMware is there, so therefore our integration is quite good. We could integrate, we could call VMware as vSphere API, we could create virtual machines, start them, install Kubernetes, upgrade them, do all that. Now, you see these are providers which are available by default. If I go to drivers, like I mentioned briefly, at the beginning you should be able to see, as soon as it loads, yeah, you should be able to see that we don't activate all of the cloud providers so some cloud providers which are available here, which you could activate. Let's say if you wanted to activate Open Telecom, let's see if it's going to work. I press activate. That's a German cloud provider. Uh, the difference between cluster drivers and node drivers, cluster drivers are those like EKS, AKS. Node drivers is where you create actually virtual machines. Everything I'm showing you here, I'm saying for the third time, is open source. So all of this code is open source. You could see, you could probably see the links on GitHub. So if you have your own cloud provider, if you want to write the driver, this is all doable. That's, to be honest, quite a significant chunk of work, but that's doable. We, we've, had, we've had already various guys writing this. So you see the list is quite long and growing. Uh, let's see if this has worked with Open Telecom. Seems like, yes, it has. So if I'm going to get back to clusters and click, click create, yeah, it's in here, Open Telecom. So this is just an example so that there is a long list of providers, of supported, of supported providers of supported infrastructure. Now, so that's the provisioning of clusters. I'm not actually going to provision them right now for various reasons, but I'm going just to show you how you should do it. If you want to have to, to, to experiment later today or sometime later, feel free and you know, then let me know if it doesn't work for you. The second thing I'm going to show is an import. So you could obviously provision your own clusters outside of Rancher. So you could either go to one of the three um, cl major cloud providers, or you could import uh, any Kubernetes cluster, right? So that means that it, if you have already your Kubernetes clusters, for those, for those of you who have played with them, you could import them. So it doesn't really matter how did you provision them. Did you use kubeadm, kubespray? Did you write your kube manifests manually, all the YAML files? You could still import the cluster to Ranger. Now, if I'm going just to show you how this is going to work, I'm just going to give my cluster a name, import it, I'm going to click create, and Rancher is going to give me a command line I need to execute, you see? So this one, with curl, which I pipe to kubectl. So for those of you who are not familiar with command line, what we are doing here, we are just retrieving a file from Rancher machine and launching this file against your existing Kubernetes cluster. Now, if I'm going just to look at this file for, for the sake of curiosity, let me select that, open the file, open it in here. Yep, that was too optimistic, so let me modify the file itself. So to, just to give you a rough idea what is happening behind the scenes, there will be some Kubernetes black magic, which is not important for the sake of this talk, but at the end of the day, what we are doing, we are just launching a Rancher agent container on your cluster. 
Now, why would I be wanting, why would I be willing to do all of that, to provision or to import your clusters with Rancher? Because Rancher simplifies some other stuff, right? You remember the cube cake I was showing? So the operating system, then Kubernetes, then applications. So I'm now going to talk about the third level applications. So Rancher allows you to use against your clusters, which could be provisioned by it or which could be imported. It could allow, it, it, it allows you to install uh, Helm charts on it. Now Helm chart, if I'm going just to ch check a local cluster, so I'm just going to go within my Rancher, I'm going to check my local cluster, which hosts Rancher itself. And now you have the visibility of this cluster, okay? So Rancher gives you this UI, which you could use to modify your clusters. And uh, now let's, let me clarify. You could provision Kubernetes cluster quite quickly yourself. You just need to write maybe a couple of dozen lines of YAML code. So that's easy. You could probably create an H cluster, HA cluster yourself, highly available cluster. That's also quite easy. However, with the, what we are seeing within SUSE is that with evolution, as soon as you install, so, so you install the cluster today, probably in six months or in three months or in nine, but within a year you would want to upgrade the Kubernetes version. And the complexity increases, right? So to start, Kubernetes can be quite tricky. So it's quite easy to start with. However, as soon as it grows and as soon as you need to support it, as soon as you need to get some value from it, install applications, upgrade clusters, that becomes quite complicated. And here where Rancher helps you. So you see that's the visibility of a cluster. Now, if I'm going to apps and marketplace, if I'm going to, to charts, you would see, and I'm going to select all of the chart, all of the available charts, you would see what Rancher offers you as a way to install Helm charts. For those of you who are not familiar with Helm charts, Helm is just a standard of, of packaging applications. So it's somewhat like RPM in Slash and RHEL, or maybe DPKG and in Debian and Ubuntu. So that's just a standard how you package apps. What we are seeing is that more and more applications towards to today are presented as Helm charts, and therefore, you know, we, we, we support that. So what we support, what you are seeing here on the screens, these are Helm charts coming from uh, SUSE Rancher. So all of these are open source. You could just go there and install. You could also add it, your Charm repositories into chart repositories. So as soon as you start packaging your own applications, your like something that you write at your company as a Helm, as a Helm chart, you will be able to add, in, add them here. Um, you, you obviously need to publish them in, in some local, local um, GitHub or something. And then you will be able to add this list and install applications from Rancher. Okay? Now, I don't have anything installed in here, but the installation is quite straightforward. So you see you can just choose any, any, any applications, any application available. So you just click there, monitoring, but for example. That's uh, what, what we see a lot. So Kubernetes comes without monitoring tool. So what we do do, we install Prometheus and Grafana and we support it. Now, equally, you could see there's a Longhorn here. So Longhorn is our solution of persistent storage, which, is, uh, which works agnostic, in an agnostic way against various clouds. So you could install it on-prem, you could install it in the cloud. Uh, Longhorn will take your uh, space onto your virtual machines and construct a, a, a Kubernetes block device, which is going to present to Kubernetes CSI. So that's a solution for you to have a, a Kubernetes compatible storage without having a, an expensive NetApp or anything like that. So I have what, about 10 minutes. So for the last 10 minutes, I'm going to talk a bit about Airbag. So that's quite an interesting thing, right? So Airbag is something that, so it's role-based access control. So that's a necessity for you to, to connect users. So as soon as you're just alone, you're alone, you're installing Kubernetes cluster, well, you maybe share it with a friend, you could just manage it manually. As soon as you want to deploy Kubernetes to a real world application company, where the real world applications are going to be run on it, probably you're going to be using some sort of authentication, right? So we support various authentication providers. So you see the list is quite long. Most, I'd say most of our clients are using Active Directory. I've seen also Google in use, I've seen Okta and Keyclock. I've also seen Ping. So what Kubernetes does, in, what Rancher does here for you, it allows you to quite quickly connect your Kubernetes clusters to this RBAC. So if you're working for a company or if you're trying to connect Kubernetes to RBAC, Rancher simplifies this a lot. So that's the first part, which is called authentication. That means that Rancher can retrieve your usernames and passwords and groups from one of the solutions. We also do a second part, which is called uh, authorization. So that means that Rancher comes with a number of predefined roles, which allows you to, quite, to be quite flexible in giving permissions to your clusters, okay? So once again, you could do everything here manually. What, if you want to take one word from my presentation, take, take the word simplicity. 
So Rancher just simplifies things and speeds you up when you when you start Kubernetes clusters. So yeah, that's a part of our back. Now I also promised there will be a continuous delivery. So continuous delivery is something which is quite an, an, an important thing. So that's um, that's the same thing. So we had a bit of um, confusion here. So we have a called which is which a thing which is called fleet. If you go to fleet.rancher.io, fleet, uh, yeah, fleet.rancher.io, you will see the description of how this works. So that's the same thing as Puppet or Shansible or Salt or Chef or whatever else you want to use, Terraform for servers. So Fleet or GitOps, that's an approach where you manage your Kubernetes clusters using code. So you don't specifically uh, log into one Kubernetes cluster and you press upgrade or do the same thing using a REST API or Terraform requests or, man or applying the Terraform, Terraform code. You would instead put your code in, in, onto GitHub, where you would describe how this works. Let me make it slightly bigger. So that's an example of what, what you can find on GitHub in Rancher. You would just go, let, let's say, to slash simple, and you would see, for those of you especially who are familiar with Kubernetes in .yaml, there will be some standard Kubernetes, standard Kubernetes YAML. So nothing fancy, nothing related to SUSE or Rancher. That's just plain, plain Kubernetes. So how does Rancher help you? Rancher in here with Git repos, you could define a Git repo, so you can point Rancher to one of the GitHub repos and say that Rancher is going to now take this code from here, from fleet examples, and it's going to apply to your clusters. Now you can apply it either to your old clusters or to the, you could define groups. I mean, if you want to get technical, you could always define groups and just you know de define a really really precise set of criteria to which service you're going to apply to which Kubernetes cluster you're going to apply it. But you could just keep it simple. So you could just modify it from, from, you, from the UI. So, all right. Maybe then in the last uh, couple of minutes remaining, I'll just briefly mention the K3S here. So K3S is a small distribution of Kubernetes which you could install from command line. It's one binary. It's literally one binary. I think we declared that it used to be maybe about, about 50 megs. Now it's about 100 megs, which may sound a lot. But with today's sizes and with the, with the growing capacity of hardware, I'd say that's reasonable size, right? Now, there are two th differences between K3S and Kubernetes. We threw out the cloud providers because we are not in anticipating that K3S will be used in, within, in collaboration between cloud providers. We, we are anticipating it to be used on the edge, on the Raspberry Pi, and NVIDIA just and other small devices. And second thing, we, we, we threw out the, all the alpha and beta functionality. So if you don't need that, if you want to have just a one small binary file which can work on your Raspberry Pi, so it supports x86 and, and others, just take a look at K3S. Yeah, I already said many times that it's all open source. Obviously, I mean, we're all here for that. So, yeah, I think that's, well, there are many things. It's like, you see, Rancher is kind of a, a big thing so to, 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 to show you, but I was just going to, to show the most important things. So I think at this point we are having, having five minutes. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm going to stop here, and if there are any questions, then, yeah, go ahead. Good idea. I see hands. Uh, the first one, the first question, please. Thank you. Uh, I have a question. Uh, do you have some audit logs uh, inside uh, this Rancher system just to make sure that somebody not doing something bad? Uh, I, I'm, I'm telling about users which you could register here in the system. We do. So we don't verify logs as such. So there is no control within Rancher. However, there is a Helm chart of logging, which is based on Banzai Cloud. So with what these things allow you to do, let me see, install and see if it's going to, to work. So it's going to do next, so it's not going to modify anything. So what this Helm chart is going to do is going to export all of your logs to one of the solutions popular on the market, which is syslogs, Splunk, Fluentd, Elasticsearch. So now we are not trying to reinvent the wheel. We are not replacing all of the solutions. What we can do, yes, it's worked. So I'm going to crash now. Yeah, it's still working. So it will take some time. but. I think it should, 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 should be done in a minute or two. As soon as this is done, uh, you will be able to see login in here. Yeah, it's already here. So let's see. Let's see output. Come on. Yeah. So as soon as I create output, I'm going to close that. Yeah, so that's the list. You see, you could, the list is quite long. Now, we don't verify. There are, there are some security tools, which is OPA, Gatekeeper, and CIS scan. But in terms of login, this is what we do. That's it. Thank you. One more question. I saw one more hand somewhere here. Oh, this one. Uh, 
Uh, well, thanks for your talk. Already uh, we know that Ranger is a well-known uh, tool, and I have uh, two questions about it. Sure. First is, uh, uh, did uh, you or your team consider uh, using other orchestration tools, for example, HashiCorp's Nomad? And the uh, second one is, uh, and how SUS uh, is uh, monetizing uh, the Ranger after buying it. Thanks. So, yeah, there are, there are many solutions. There are many good solutions out there. Uh, I know that Nomad exists. I haven't personally touched it, so I don't know how you would, you would do that. I know that there are various solutions on the market, so I don't really have a first-hand experience. So HashiCorp is also an open source company. Nomad, I believe, uh, look, I think I'm not going to go into details because that's not my, my, my area of expertise. So I've, I've seen it from time to time. We don't manage it from, from, from Rancher. We can only import actual Kubernetes. But yeah, I mean, nothing stops you from using the, 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 the two of them. And I'm sorry, what was the second question? What, what is the SUSE thinking of, of Rancher or what, how is the SUSE modifying Rancher? Would yes, how, how does it uh, monetize uh, the Rancher product? It doesn't, well, what do you mean, how does it modify? So Mo so monetize, so monetize, like uh, yeah. Yeah, how it earns money from it. Yeah, I got the point, but it's like, it's now one company, right? So 2.5 was the latest version of Rancher, which was pushed from Rancher itself. Now 2.6, has, it has already been done in collaboration. If you're, if you're talking about whether we're going to support just less or something, no, this is not the case. So Rancher is still staying 100% open source as of today. It's still, it's still operating system agnostic. So uh, there are a new, new functionality here in 2.6. The further functionality, how it's going to be modified by SUSE in the future, is not yet clear, right? Because the, 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 the approximate date is about sometime in April, and in Kubernetes world, that's quite a long time ago, a long, long time in the future. So I don't really have a, a clear roadmap to tell you what the further modifications are going to be. All right. OK. Uh, do we have? Uh more questions? Yeah, we have one. And we have time for one question, so it's great. Please ask. Thank you for your talk. It was awesome. It was uh, really on topic. Uh, my question is, can you import a K3S cluster into Rancher? Yes, the answer is yes. Both products are from Rancher. You could upgrade it and it will be first class citizen. So you could upgrade it and you could uh, upgrade the version of K3S later. Yes. Uh, does K3S feature some kind of interface maybe as an installable, um, I don't know, add-on chart or something? We don't need a chart because we, the installation of K3S is literally one command. If you go there, if you just look at the, at the curl, you see, you could just copy paste that. And if you, if, you, if you look inside of what's happening in here, I'm not sure if I can open this in browser, let's see. So it's not a specifically long script. You could just glance through it. You see, it's like it's what, five screens maybe? So compare it to you just, if you want to be simple, just copy paste it once. If you want to verify for security, well, here the, here the, the whole of code. No, my question was, uh, is it possible to install some kind of uh, user web interface for K3S without installing a full-fledged Rancher installation? No, unfortunately the answer is no. So we don't have a small UI. You can install K3S just, just as a binary and you could import it and use it in Rancher. There is no small minor, there is no small cut-up version of, of UI to manage just K3S. No, sorry. Okay, thank you. Pleasure. Uh, thank you uh, for the speaker once again.